You're listening to episode 18 of the Ento Podcast. Looking to stay up to date on all things entomorphology? You're in the right place. Welcome to the Ento Podcast with your host, Ross Bell. Hi, and welcome to episode 18 of the Ento Podcast with me, your host, Ross Bell. So thanks for listening um, and tuning in this week. I've got four stories for you. Before we get started, let's hear a quick word from our sponsor, Crick8. Crick8, for all your dried, flavoured and cricket protein products. Find us at www.crick8.co.uk. Welcome back. The first story we've got is from the Smithsonian. This summer, try termite chocolate sprinkles on your ice cream. There's nothing quite like the satisfying crunch that comes from biting into a salad. But what if that crunch didn't come from lettuce or croutons at all, but instead an unlikely source? Insects. Insectarium, a museum that's part of the Space for Life, a museum district located in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, is inviting adventurous eaters to dine on crickets, silkworms, termites and other bugs as part of a special programme that runs now through to the end of summer. The event features a variety of menu items that on the surface may appear completely normal. Think gourmet hamburgers, tacos, falafels and ice cream. But with unexpected accoutrements that most people typically deem as pests. Its purpose is to introduce visitors to the unusual yet delicious food source in a variety of fun and educational ways. Insects are very high in protein and they have all kinds of nutrients, vitamins and essential amino acids. They're also good for the environment because it takes a lot less feed to produce one kilo of protein from insects compared to beef and chicken. Daphne Lurie Montpetit, Scientific Recreation Coordinator at Insectorium, tells Smithsonian.com. Not only that, but insects could very well play an important role in helping the environment by reducing harmful emissions. The researchers have linked to livestock according to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. But the first step is convincing consumers that eating bugs isn't gross as they might assume. In northern cultures, like those in Canada and the United States, eating insects is not part of our history. We don't have many available insects in places like Africa, Asia and Mexico where it's common to eat insects. Here, bugs have long been associated as pests, resulting in a negative image of them. Many people think they're the last resort food and what you eat when you've got no other choice. Since 1993, chefs at the Insectarium have been working to squash the public fears about dining on creepy crawlies, and it appears to be working. Over the years, the museum has seen an increase increase in people's acceptance of insects as a food source. And this year, they've been offering meals that are affordable and approachable, such as tacos and burgers. You can still see the insects in some of them, but not in others. And for some people, it's a bit more difficult to eat a bug while it's looking at you in the eye. For example, rather than serving a standard beef burger, Chef Rafael Martinez who grew up in Mexico and remembers eating bugs as a child and his team are offering cricket burgers which look similar to ground beef but the patties contain bug. The tacos receive a sprinkling of silkworms while the soft serve ice cream cones come dipped in termite chocolate for a satisfying crunch. The insectarium's insect menu will be available through to September the 4th. So if you're in or around Quebec, nip on down to the insectarium in the museum district and try out the insectarium's uh, insect menu. Next story comes from the Scotsman. Iona Amos, eating with the planet in mind, offers food for thought. It's by Iona Amos. Next Monday, see the start of the first ever climate in week when we're being asked to eat with the planet in mind. This doesn't mean giving up meat, just swapping your daily intake of beef and lamb for pork and poultry. Doing this for a year can save the equivalent amount of greenhouse gas emissions expended by driving 3,500 miles. Great, sounds fairly easy, good for your health, so let's do it. Or maybe we could go a step further. Instead of farmed pork and poultry, perhaps we could get our protein from an alternative, more sustainable source. Insects. Entomophagy, as it's known, is not just for the fame-hungry Egypts on reality TV shows. More than two billion folks around the world already eat creepy crawlies as part of their daily diet, guzzling around 1,900 different species. They're nutritious and delicious, apparently. So I'd like to share a few culinary tips on how to serve them. It's your granny's fly cemetery recipe. 
with a difference. Real flies. I'm no stranger to the idea of snacking on things you might usually clean off your windscreen, having sampled crickets and mealworms in the past, but I recently received a handy little book, Insect, an edible field guide. It contains all you need to know about which critters around the world are good for the pot and instructions on how to prepare them. Author Stephen Gates has even listed his top 10 favourite meals, with red and salad at number one. And some of the most surprising dishes he has encountered, mealworm ice cream anyone? I turned to the UK Northern Europe section to discover what fresh produce we have at our disposal here. It seems there's plenty to choose from, with many of the recipes simple enough for even the least talented chefs. Take the sesame cricket nibbles for instance. Once you've caught your bugs, easy according to Gates, fry them in a little groundnut oil for 30 seconds per batch, leave them on some kitchen paper to soak up the excess oil, while you mix up two tablespoons of dark soy sauce and one of mirin. You could use caster sugar instead. Dip the crickets in the liquid and roll in sesame seeds of voila. Perfect with a large glass of wine or two. Gates describes them as crispy and meaty, like a cross between plain crisps and roast chicken. Mine were a bit soggy. You can deep fry many of the species featured, including the giant house spider. These are best tossed in a bit of salt and paprika to improve their flavour. That's if you can actually catch them. Others, like the strangely named common cockchafer, are better roasted or made into soup. I admit I'm intrigued by the idea of a prawn cocktail made with slaters or an earthworm stir-fry. Not an insect, I know, but at least an invertebrate, though I doubt I'll ever make them at home. However, there is one seasonal Scottish ingredient featured that serves up for human consumption, surely provide multiple benefits. Here's a chance to get your own back on the bloodthirsty Highland Midge. Or midgy. Scourge of walkers and campers and the blight on the Scottish tour- tourism industry. They're pretty easy to harvest, according to Gates. Just go outside at dusk or dawn, or any other time, using yourself as bait. Simply wave an old oil frying pan through the swarm, press them into a cake or burger, and then cook. Haven't tried this yet, but the tasting notes suggest a slightly nutty, musty flavour, and crumbled into soups and stews adds an unamami richness. Like Parmesan cheese without the cheesiness. Got to be coming to a bistro near you soon. The next story comes from the Daily Star, which isn't a paper I generally sort of look at, but uh, just that their headline got me. Bloke scoffs three pounds of insects in five minutes in a gross bug-eating contest. So there's a, uh, as it says, a bug-eating contest in uh, Chongqing, probably massively mispronounced, in China. If you get a chance, go to the website, click on the link. And like I say, the Daily Star is not usually paper you, you read, but it's, um, yeah, just some of the pictures of these people with sort of two hands in the buckets of, they look like sort of mealworms or caterpillars, just gobbling them down. I mean, it's the uh, the note underneath says it's the locust, dragonfly, silkworm, pupa, and bamboo worms. Anyway, this is the little bit of story that, that there actually is. The winning contestant surnamed Peng, gobbled down no less than 2.7 pounds of locusts, dragonflies, silkworm pupa and bamboo worms to win a 24 karat gold bullion. However, the valuable prize for coming first was nothing compared to being hailed as bug eating king. Peng was perhaps an, at an unfair advantage as he's from Chongqing in China where bugs are considered a delicacy. He said the worms and locusts were delicious. Several women took part. One even managed 1.1 pounds of the bugs before stopping because she was terrified. Contestants said they wanted to challenge themselves and they had nothing to fear because experts say the bugs were filled with protein anyway. The competition in the city of Lejiang in the southwest of China's Yuan province sought to show off some of the region's most popular customs, which include traditional dress and a feverish love of fried insects. The other participants comprised tourists from all over China who had gone to the scenic spot to visit the Jade Dragon Snow Mountain. The pictures are great. I'm going to have to use one of these for the uh, the episode image for this episode. Last story for this week comes from the Dayton Daily News. You won't believe the secret ingredient in these new brownies from Second Street Market. An open mind and an open palate. That's all Casey Morningoff is asking for. But that's still a big ask for at least some of the customers who meandered past his vendor booth yesterday at the second street market in downtown dayton the passerby would pause to consider a tempting plate of brownie samples that rested on the table in front of morninghoff's evolve booth market goers would inquire about the samples and morninghoff would explain that they're made with cricket powder yes a powder made up of ground crickets the insect blended with other more conventional ingredients such as whole wheat flour sugar and coconut oil 
Some recoiled at the very idea, but inevitably someone else in the group, a spouse or a friend, would be adventurous enough to try a brownie. Raisin Eye Brown confirmed to his incredulous family members what morning already knew. They're delicious, and they are. They taste like, well, uh, brownies. The cricket powder, morning off, says, imparts nothing more than a nuttiness to the flavour of the brownie, but offers much more beyond the flavour profile. Let's let morning off who, by the way, is a mechanical engineer and earring degree from Clemson University and works at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, pick up the story from there. My company's called Evolve. I sell baked goods, cookies, brownies, granola bars and protein bars. They incorporate cricket powder. Insects prove an incredibly healthy, sustainable and delicious lifestyle, and entomophagy, the human consumption of insects, is already practiced by 2 billion people around the world. Cricket powder is just whole roasted crickets ground into a powder. Crickets contain all the essential amino acids and have twice as much protein as beef. And since the entire cricket is consumed, we're also eating plenty of fibre, omega-3 fatty acids, and a deep range of vitamins and minerals. There's no waste in consuming crickets since the whole creature is eaten. By the numbers, crickets grow 13 times faster than cattle, require 12 times less feed, and 2,000 times less water. Crickets are humane to farm and make nutritionally accurate substitute for some of the meat in our diet. Morninghoff said he became interested in human consumption of edible insects about a year ago. My interest developed into research and I began experimenting with different ways to eat insects. Entomophagy has been around for thousands of years and is beginning to break ground in the US. I want to join the sustainable and fascinating movement and encourage others to do so as well. The Second Street Market, Morninghoff said, allows me to interact with locals in a friendly environment and I knew I wanted to begin my company there. The friends I've met at the market have responded very well. In the short time that I've been there, I have several consistent customers. And most people are open-minded to the idea and will at least try a sample. That's what I encourage everyone to do, is to come with an open mind and an open palate. Evolve is a Sunday-only vendor at the downtown Dayton Market, operated by Five Rivers Metro Park. Although Morning Half has other holiday weekend commitments for this coming Sunday, and won't be back there. He'll be back on the 9th of July with an array of cricket flower based products for consumers to sample. So that's the last story for this week. But thanks again for listening and tune in again next time for some more insect based news stories. Till then, this is Ross saying, Tara for now. Thanks so much for listening to the Ento Podcast. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit theentopodcast.co.uk and on Facebook and Twitter at The Ento Podcast. We'll catch you next time.